cranberries are a staple in many Thanksgiving meals, whether as a sauce or part of a dish. But this year, the trip these little fruits made to your table was a bit more challenging. Warmer weather and record rainfall caused by climate change mean the berries grow more slowly. Eric Fisher, chief meteorologist at our Boston station WBZ, got waist deep at a Massachusetts farm to find out how growers are coping with the ever-changing weather patterns. Brilliant as the famous fall foliage, cranberries paint a striking contrast against the blue skies of Massachusetts. Does it ever get old waiting through a feast of Thanksgiving dinner? Actually, I, I love this. You know, I, it's cool to be out here like this. Though the scene is picturesque as ever, for 40-year bog veteran Glenn Reed and growers across New England, getting to the finish line this year has been a battle. The last couple of years have been, we thought, strange as far as weather goes and stuff, but I think this year has really been the defining year. You name it, we've had it. First, it was the record-setting deluge of rain that pounded down throughout the spring and summer. Cranberries are floated for an easier harvest, but it's not their natural state. Then came the hottest summer on record. The problem with that is the berries are sitting on your bog, uh, soaking wet, and now you have a very hot day, you start to get rot. And it's culminating with one of the warmest falls on record as growers waited for cold nights that never came. Middle of September, you start to usually have colder nights. This year we didn't do that, but that is what starts to trigger that coloring. It's really the same chemical reaction that happens to the leaves in the fall. Through early November, Reed says only five nights got to frosty levels. They've never waited longer for the chill to start setting in. Crews that were booked to start in mid-September had to sit and wait until October to get started. Another costly burden in an industry with already slim margins. When we look at the statistics and we look at the charts and the graphs and we say, yes, it's getting warmer, fall in particular here in New England is warming, is that something you feel, something that as a grower you've noticed? Oh yeah, we, we definitely noticed that the climate is changing. Down the road at the UMass Cranberry Station, Hillary Sandler and her team are hoping to help growers like Reed to adapt. This is a new variety trial that we just planted uh, this past June. Sandler oversees rows of test bogs, finding ways to increase yield and create varieties that can weather warmer temperatures. Not just summer and fall, but winter too. Deep cold has become more scarce, and a centuries-old tradition has disappeared along with it. It's really been much more noticeable to me, say, in the past 10 years. When I first started in 1990, every winter we would flood our bogs and we would get ice that would form out here, and we would flood them to prevent some winter injury. We rarely get ice formed now. Something Reed and everyone else we spoke to have noticed as well. Always used to be something. I mean, growing up, we used to skate on all these bogs, playing hockey all went along. We don't do that anymore. At the end of the production, all this change simply means there's a cranberry crush. With Thanksgiving coming up, everyone wants their cranberries yesterday. Um, we're doing the best we can to, to get them out there. Whether your team's straight from the can or fresh made, Will you be paying for the burden of increasingly erratic weather? This one here, see that's an odd shape here. Brian Wick, executive director of the Cape Cod Cranberry Growers Association, says that may not be the case. The consumer is only going to pay so much for their food. Uh, we like to think that cranberries are a staple, that everyone's eating them every day. But that's not necessarily the case if the price goes beyond what they're willing to pay for that. And so in a year with staffing shortages, supply chain issues, and hot, wet weather cutting yields, it all falls back on growers like Reed, who will have to find a new way forward. We're going to have to adjust the way we grow because we're not going to change the way the weather is. For CBS Mornings, I'm Eric Fisher in Wareham, Massachusetts. Mm. You know, I love cranberries, but they were never a staple of our Thanksgiving table because it's French Caribbean okay. and Chinese, right? And uh, you our family. Your seafood dish. Uh, egg, yeah. Or the seafood pie. But yeah. my brother in law, Chris, loves my sister's husband. He loves cranberries and he likes the canned stuff. Yeah. Which is it's like the best. nasty. No. <laughs> Michelle. No. It is Where, not the best. Michelle, you I'm have to make some and bring it for you Saturday. No, no, no. I know. I've had both. I've made both. Okay. But, you know, I'm a girl from the hood. So. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, know, that, has, that was what, a staple. What does that have to do with it? People in the hood like fresh cranberries if they can get it. Yeah, but no, well, I know. We're, whole not, other, we're, we're not going to go to it. <laughs> but what, what's really spectacular about it is it has its own unique taste. It is a memory embedded in my mind and my okay. grandmother's house. And she was not cooking any fresh cranberries. It takes too long in her mind. She's pulling it out of the can. All right, okay. Makes good sense there, Michelle Miller, as always. <laughs>